I have gathered you all here today to plan an intervention for our good friend, Julie Albright. Why? Because she smokes weed? I know it's still 1944 where you are, Molly, but reefer madness wasn't real. You think I don't know that, Courtney? I'm literally high right now. Then what's the intervention for? Julie's school doesn't have the funding for a girls' basketball team, so due to Title IX, she has to be allowed to play for the boys. As a result, Julie's been hanging out with too many toxic gym bros, and I'm worried she's going to start getting into steroids. Oh, Julie's definitely into steroids. I sold them to her. What the fuck, Felicity? Guys, shouldn't we wait for Josefina to get here before we go further? Josefina's always the voice of reason. Wait, where is Josefina? She has to do confession today. Oh my god, I keep forgetting she's Catholic. What could Josefina possibly have to confess? The girl is perfect. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. Yesterday, I punched a goat again. But to be fair, it was Floricita, and you know that bitch always has it coming. I know, an eye for an eye and all that, practicing forgiveness, but father, it is so difficult with Floricita sometimes, like that bitch has go really wants a fight, if only my friends could understand, but none of them have yet accepted you, father. What can I do to help them see the light? What's happening? Is this a sign from God? Who are you guys? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome for the first time. I'm Savvy and this is Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. And today we are going to be talking about sort of the American Girl Doll Company, a business that produces books, but also knockoffs of said company. So we've got a fun video for you today. Before we get into it, I want to give a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to everyone who supports this channel and allows me to keep making videos like this as often as I do. So thank you so much. Patreon supporters' names are up on the screen. You can check out the description below where supporters who contribute $5 a month and up have the option to link their own things in my description below as well. This past December, I put out a three-hour deep dive on American Girl Dolls, the full history of the brand and the political implications behind some of the doll's stories. And one of the inspirations for this video came from seeing so much conservative backlash to the American Girl brand going woke as we entered the 2020s. What a dork. I watched conservative influencers like Ali Beth Stuckey falsely remember American Girl dolls having a more conservative and promoting traditional femininity and biblical femininity type of leaning in the past. And so I posed the question to my audience, why did people misremember the American Girl dolls as conservative when they never were. Literally the first doll, Samantha, was out here fighting against child labor and capitalist exploitation and in favor of women's right to vote. When I asked this question, I got some comments and some DMs and some feedback from people who were speculating on what a potential cause could be. They all told me that maybe these right-wing influencers could be confusing the American Girl dolls with one of their many Christian knockoff brands. And I was like, one of their many what? The American Girl dolls, they, they have what? That's right, Christian knockoff brands. And we're going to go over some of those today. Now, to be fair, I know that in my intro skit, Josefina was talking about Catholicism specifically, and that's because Josefina is canonically Catholic, just like how Rebecca is canonically Jewish. I'm aware that the sects of Christianity we're going to be discussing today may include things like evangelical and fundamentalist Christianity, and those people do not consider Catholics to be real Christians. The church alliances can be rough out there, but I'm not here to break down all the specifics behind that. Word. With all of that said, let's take a look at our first example of an American Girl Doll Christian knockoff brand, Girls of Faith. As a mother of three daughters, it's just comforting to know that a story that they're interested in reading or a toy that they want to play with is going to be helping me in my job, helping the church in their job, helping the Christian schools in their job. Girls of Faith is an 18-inch doll company with the slogan, free to fly with Jesus inside. Sounds like these dolls all have, they all have Jesus inside of them. We can crack open their hollow vinyl interiors and find Jesus inside, like the prize inside a Kinder Egg. Instead of stuffing, there's Jesus. Warning, Jesus is a choking hazard. Boy, that escalated quickly. When you enter the Girls of Faith website, you instantly see testimonials from customers like, I would buy a Girls of Faith doll 10 times before any other 18-inch doll. Any other 18-inch doll? I wonder who set the standard for 18-inch dolls that look exactly like this. I wonder whom you in particular could be dissing there. I scramble off to the death! On the homepage of the Girls of Faith website, it emphasizes how important it is that these dolls are made 
in America. Under the updated story section, it says, when I began the journey to create Girls of Faith dolls, I dreamed of having them made in America. I started talking to other moms that found that they too were frustrated by the fact that no toy vinyl dolls on the market today are made in America. So I began a search and soon found out why we moms couldn't find any American vinyl made dolls. There were no manufacturers left in our country. Wow, okay, that's actually awesome. Supporting local manufacturing, funding factory work in a country that has some basic minimum wage laws, at least some semblance of worker protections even if we still have a long way to go but at the very least okay that's good right i mean from that blurb it sure sounds like these dolls were in fact made in america right well let's click on the learn more button and find out it says one company kept popping up on my search, but they only made baby dolls and baby doll kits for artists and collectors. They agreed to make our dolls even though they had never produced a toy for children. We had a beautiful face mold that my then business partner Shane Hodges molded herself, and our doll was gorgeous and completely original and completely ours. But there were issues with manufacturing. It seemed that our producer could not create limb attachments that held up to child's play 100% of the time. We worked through those struggles the best we could, doing repairs and replacing broken dolls. It meant a lot to me to have our dolls made in the USA, and some hiccups along the way weren't going to change it. It has always been a top priority to be to have 100% customer satisfaction and I have done everything I could to ensure that even when it meant losing money so broken dolls could be replaced. Then COVID hit and our small manufacturer experienced setback after setback and finally had to go out of business. I was devastated, of course, and had no way to move forward with American-made dolls. So I just let the business sit, so to speak, for a year and a half or more. I had no desire to begin production in China. I waited and prayed. I came in contact with a lady and her husband who were dreaming of starting a doll manufacturing facility in Texas. Hallelujah! But these things take money and time. They are still not to a place at which they can begin manufacturing. She eventually offered to allow me to use her existing doll that is currently made in China. She sent me a sample, and at first I couldn't imagine moving forward without our original face mold, but the new doll's sweet face began to grow on me, and God began to speak to my heart, saying that the message of girls of faith still needed to go out to young girls now, despite what doll I used. So I sent the new doll out to a few customers, and they were all very happy with her. Now, there are many happy customers across the country enjoying her, and there have not been any issues with limbs detaching, which is a huge relief to me. I'm still in constant prayer that eventually our original doll can be made in the USA again, but I am so thankful that God prompted me and opened the doors to this new temporary doll when he did because our girls need them now more than ever. All right, so after reading that huge rambly mess, I have concluded that the dolls are in fact made in China, just like American Girl dolls are. And don't get me wrong, I too preferred when the official American Girl dolls were also manufactured in West Germany, just like all the OG fans. And by OG fans, I mean original fans, not like our generation knockoff doll fans. Those have the creepy symmetrical faces and the rooted hair, no thank you. But we know that manufacturing in China is cheaper. Everybody knows that. I wouldn't have even bothered talking about this if your homepage didn't make it sound like these dolls were made in the USA and that was one of the selling points. If you didn't act like these dolls being locally made made them superior to the much more successful American Girl dolls which were made in China and therefore trash unlike your dolls which are also made in China because your dolls are truly American, they're not truly American. That was intentionally misleading and you know it. I wish I could find more about this other manufacturer in Texas and the face mold they gave you because uh, th these face molds are not original. These are American Girl dolls. Like I can look at an Our Generation doll from Target or a My Life As doll from Walmart and those are clearly knockoffs, but their faces are different. Their faces are much creepier. I don't like looking at them very much, but they are different faces. These dolls have American Girl doll faces. Look at Hannah, a girl from 19th century Massachusetts. I'm sorry, that's Samantha. Put bangs on her and you'll see it. That's the German Goats Romina face mold, brown decal eyes. That is goddamn Samantha. But Hannah's story is very different from Samantha's sinful secular lifestyle. Here is Hannah's story. Hannah Patterson is a shy, quiet girl growing up in Groveland, Massachusetts in the late 1800s. Hannah and her family live and work on a dairy farm owned and operated by a mean and uncaring man. In the midst of their difficult life, Hannah finds comfort in the Bible. Although she has many unanswered questions about what she reads in God's word, she rests in the peaceful feeling it always gives her. When Hannah witnesses a crime, she learns just how much she truly depends on God. Her life is changed when God comes to her aid in a miraculous way. Okay, um, you know what other doll worked on a giant plot of land run by a mean and uncaring man in the late 1800s? Addie, because she had to escape literal slavery. And you know what? Addie was Christian! She relied on her faith to get herself through hard times too. She loved going to church every Sunday, but I guess it's not Christian enough for you if the doll's not white. Now, to be fair, Girls of Faith does have one doll who appears to be non-white. Her name is Kayla, and it's unclear what era she's from. What? year is it? 
Here is Kayla's story. Kayla Newman is an energetic girl with big dreams. When her grandparents retire and move in next door, she loves hearing about their missionary journeys and daydreaming about what she'll do for God when she's all grown up. Kayla's wise grandmother helps Kayla see that she doesn't have to wait until she's grown to do God's work. Kayla begins learning how to overcome her fears and be a bold missionary for God right in her own neighborhood. So while all Kayla's friends are going door to door selling Girl Scout cookies, Kayla's gonna learn how to instead go door to door harassing all of her neighbors to sell our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I considered getting these books to read them and review them for this video, but I didn't want to spend money on them because I just need you guys to see how shit the quality of these books are. Here is Kayla's book. I'm sorry, why is there no cover art? Why does this look like the placeholder photo that you'd put in Goodreads before the book's actual cover is done? But no, these are what the books actually look like. On her book and a little note from Shane and I, teach them more about God, about how they can live out their faith books and apply them to situations that they experience themselves. Just reading the books, but still having a time to instill those principles. These books are literally cardstock that someone got printed at Staples. They're the equivalent of someone's high school theater program. And that's what boggles my mind. You were able to get whole ass dolls produced, good quality dolls too by the looks of it, dolls that look much better than other American Girl knockoffs, yet you couldn't get a book printed? It's easier now than ever to get a book printed. Like, just make an account on KDP or Lulu or Book Baby or Ingram Spark. How short are these books that they can even be stapled together like that? You will not be surprised to learn that their third doll, Audrey, has the exact same story as Kayla. In case you wanted Kayla's story, but you needed to make sure that instead your kid was able to get a straight haired, blonde, white girl to tell you that story instead. Audrey Thompson is an outgoing, friendly girl who lives in Southern Tennessee. When Audrey's parents invite a new family over for lunch, it starts a chain of events that ultimately leads to the perfect opportunity for Audrey to share her faith with a new friend. Along the way, Audrey learns that although she may not have all the answers, she can make a difference in someone's life by simply sharing the love of Jesus. With the help of her parents and siblings, Audrey gets the chance to witness the life-changing power of God. So Audrey has to learn how to preach the gospel too. God forbid any of Audrey's friends are Jewish or any religion other than Protestant Christianity. We're on a mission from God. Now, you guys know me. I love small businesses, I love supporting people's dreams, I love small artists, I love crafters, I'm a small business owner myself, my main goal is to support women running small businesses. And on the Girls of Faith About page, it even explains that Sarah McCord, the owner of Girls of Faith, quote, lovingly packages each doll herself and enjoys handling all the customer relations. This business does seem to be just her and her business partner, Shane Hodges, who claims to have illustrated the books, which have no cover art, and also claims to have sculpted the doll's faces, which look identical to the goats Romina and American Girl Doc so I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm always going to support women following their dreams and starting their own businesses, being creative, especially in the book and toy realms, which is the industry that I'm in. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. Foreverhomefriends.com linked in the description below. But I wish they had done something original. Why copy an existing doll brand unless you genuinely thought American Girl dolls were too secular? Despite Addie and Kirsten both being Christians, Josefina being Catholic, and Rebecca being Jewish, religion playing a huge, important role in all of these doll stories. With all of that in mind, this company just seems like borderline plagiarism. And you guys know, I never want to be the one out here defending a huge company like Mattel over a small business. But to teach kids Bible stories through play, why not create your own original toys that aren't 18 inch dolls with the identical proportions to American Girl dolls. Why not have the toys learn Bible stories as educational tools rather than as propaganda to harass your neighbors with the gospel? But Girls of Faith, while perhaps being just a small operation, is certainly not alone in this endeavor. Next, we've got another Christian American Girl knockoff brand to cover, and that is Faith Friends. Faith Friends dolls are exactly the same as Girls of Faith dolls in that they are also direct American Girl doll knockoffs with a Christian twist. But in many ways, they're much worse. For example, they have three dolls available and those dolls are named Grace, Faith and Hope, very original. Second, while I will give them points for not ripping off the American Girl doll face molds directly, they do instead have these really creepy symmetrical face molds like the Our Generation dolls at Target and they make them kind of look like they're gonna murder you while you sleep. So points for originality, but not for execution. According to the homepage, each doll comes with a 40 page girl journal, a mini verse book, a cross Bible page marker, bonus club patch and digital parent guide. First of all, I love the term girl journal. Is that like girl dinner? Second, I'm very curious what's in the parent guide. 
guide. While you know I love small businesses and I want to support women being entrepreneurs, I feel less bad about hardcore roasting Faith Friends because there is an interview with the founder of the company in which she directly admits that she ripped off American Girl because she wanted to do it better. This past October, the website American Mom posted an article called Faith Friends Co. How One Mompreneur is Fighting for Girlhood. As the article explains, sticking up for your values is tough. Cultivating an environment where your children are allowed to be children is tough. Finding girls toys that allow them to freely play and pretend can be tough. Starting your own company for the sake of your daughters, her spiritual and social well-being and the bolstering of your values is really tough. But that's exactly what Emily at Faith Friends did. Emily saw a void in the girls' market. There weren't dolls that explicitly stood for Christian values and encouraged girls' natural feminine natures. Emily wanted this for her own daughter. An American girl doll wasn't quite cutting it, especially under the threat of modern social movement demands. So Emily created her own company, designed her own doll, and is ready to offer conservative and Christian mothers and daughters an alternative that serves their values. So first of all, I will not stand for this American girl doll slander. You may remember in my deep dive video from December, I reviewed the book Dolls of Our Lives, which gives two historians detailed account of the history behind the American Girl Company and how it formed. And it was emphasized in that book and in all of founder Pleasant Rowland's original mission statements for the company that American Girl Dolls were intended for the sole purpose of preserving girlhood. That while Barbies portrayed aspirations of the future or baby dolls represented the idea of looking forward to caregiving, that American Girl Dolls were meant to represent childhood, the stage you're in, the here and now, while also representing the history and the past. That's why, to this day, 38 years into the company's existence, none of the dolls have ever had a romantic subplot or a love interest in any of their books, and I hope they never will. Also, I'm not sure what void you saw in the market, considering these dolls look to have been launched in 2023, and the Girls of Faith line, the one I talked about just a few minutes ago, have been around since 2017, which is six years earlier. So clearly you didn't look into the market hard of if you didn't notice any other 18-inch dolls with a Christian theme. Not only were you knocking off a major doll brand, you weren't even original in your choice to plagiarize said original doll brand for Christian reasons. That's like a double ripoff. So what was Emily's inspiration for starting up this company? Let's see what she herself has to say. Three years ago, I searched for a Christian alternative before purchasing an American Girl doll for my daughter, but I couldn't find one that checked all the boxes of our shared values and faith without compromising quality or style. I didn't know it at the time, but I now realize the seed was planted. Fast forward a few years later to last December when AG released a book about body image for girls and it's packed with lies about who God made them to be. I went to Google and searched the market again because I knew there had to be a better option. Still nothing. That was my I need to do this moment. I considered potential partnerships with other doll companies, but ultimately I felt called to start from scratch to create the type of doll brand I dreamed of for my daughters and girls everywhere. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. First, when you searched for a Christian alternative, how did you find nothing when Girls of Faith was already right there? I guess she did say she couldn't find one that checked all the boxes of our shared values and faith without compromising quality or style, so she's either implying that the Girls of Faith dolls are somehow not Christian enough, or that she thinks the quality and style of her dolls are better, which is bullshit because the Girls of Faith dolls objectively look better, probably because the face mold is Samantha. So, Maybe that was a subtle dig at the other Christian dolls being too secular or something, or maybe she just like actually didn't find them. But then later she says, I went to Google and searched the market again because I knew there had to be a better option, still nothing. Emily, I really think you need to work on your Googling skills because it took me about 10 seconds of searching Christian American girl doll knockoffs to find both your company and Girls of Faith plus others on the front page of results. So then she talks about the book, A Smart Girl's Guide to Body Image. I've actually made two videos on this book. The first one I made in January of 2023, and the second one I made literally last week when I interviewed the author of that book. I highly recommend you watch both of those videos if you want a complete breakdown on the details of what went on with this book. How do I know that Emily didn't actually read this book or didn't actually do any research on what this book actually contained? Because she literally says, last December when AG released a book about body image for girls and it's packed with lies about who God made them to be. Literally not a single word in that sentence is true. I mean, maybe in a vacuum, if you isolated the words, AG released a book about body image, like that section of the sentence is true on its own without any of the context. But within that sentence, it's not true. Let me explain why. 
First, the book was not released, quote, last December. Since this article came out in 2023, I'm assuming she means December of 2022 when she says last December, regardless of what she means, this book was not released in December of any year. It was released in February of 2022 at 10 months before the shitstorm hit. Just look at the book's Amazon page, which lists the release date as February 15th, 2022. And if you sort the reviews by date, you can see tons of reviews dating back long before December of 2022 because the book was released well before that. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! But Savvy, you might be asking, why are you so fixated on her getting the book's release month wrong, even if it's in a published and clearly not fact-checked article? Because the fact that she thought it was published in December means she didn't actually follow any information about the book's release. She followed exclusively the negative backlash from Alyssa Walsh, Ali Beth Stuckey, and all the other conservative influencers on Twitter who made angry posts about this book. Those people only even knew about this book's existence because Alyssa Walsh, wife of Matt Walsh, God help her, bought American Girl stuff for her nieces at Christmas and then upon seeing one LGBTQ positive page in the book decided to return everything and throw a tantrum about it on Twitter. That's why everyone found out about this book in December of 2022, because of one Christian Mega Karen's Christmas shopping bitch fest. Second, this book was not packed with lies about who God made them to be. I've read the book, Emily, have you? If you've also read it, can you point to the page, give me a page number, a quote, a line from the book where the book tells one single lie about who God made the reader to be? Just one. I guarantee you can't because it's not there. Since Emily thought the book was released in December, meaning she likely got her news from conservative outrage Twitter, I'm assuming she's referring to the three pages in this book that address LGBTQ topics. I am not going to dissect these pages for a third time because I have already done it twice and I will link those videos in the description below. But I will say that nowhere on those three pages about LGBTQ topics does it mention God, deny the existence of God, or suggest going against God. All it does is say that being LGBTQ is fine and that if you suspect you might be transgender, you should talk to your parents and doctor about it. But the majority of advice revolved around finding ways to love your body even if you feel dysphoria, like finding the right clothes and hairstyles to make you feel authentic. Similar to how other pages say there's nothing wrong with having a disability, and other pages talk about how painting your nails can be fun, but you should still get your parents' permission first. Oh no, I guess it's a lie because God didn't didn't bring us to this earth with, with painted nails. So saying that sometimes you can paint your nails means that you're going against God's word. Almighty God, we thank thee. God made some people LGBTQ, Emily. Who are you to question God? So I'm just really frustrated that an entrepreneur would start an entire business based on a lie. I found that this book that was published in December 2022 because that's the month I first heard about it on alt-right Twitter and the book obviously didn't exist before I heard about it because I have no sense of object permanence because I have the brain of a puppy who forgets which cup his treat is under. Who the fuck are you to run an educational book and doll company if you're going to criticize a book without actually knowing what was in it or knowing anything about it? That was your inspiration for starting this brand? Maybe that's why instead of actual novels with the dolls, we get girl journals and just pages of Bible verse. Where's the literacy, Emily? You forgot about one little thing. It's called the music. At one point in the American Mom article, the interviewer asks, what do you think modern toys and child entertainment is missing? What about it should parents be wary of? And Emily answers, the toy and doll market is saturated with junky plastic toys and short-lived entertainment. A lot of it lacks meaningful stories or characters. I think there can be a time and place for cheap and short-lived novelties, but I also think what our children play with, read, and enjoy matters. The toys, books, technology, clothes that we let into our children's lives have an impact. So you care about meaningful stories and characters. That's rich coming from you, Emily, who doesn't know how to read, who doesn't include a novel with the girls, but instead a girl journal. Actually, the interviewer does ask Emily about whether the dolls are going to come with stories or books. And Emily says, we hope to add this in the future. My daughters and I have loved reading the Little House series. Wow, if only there were an American Girl doll who had a book series with themes similar to Little House on the Prairie. If only they had such a doll who was also Christian. It's almost like it was the first fucking doll they released back in 1986. Kirsten, who is a Christian doll, who also lives a very similar life to Little House on the Prairie and has that in her book series. Then on the American Mom article, the interviewer asks this question. We are all about American made here, so we're happy to see that's part of your mission. What does American made mean to you? What made that a priority for you? All right, American made is part of their mission. Awesome. Now, earlier in this video, when we saw the Girls of Faith dolls on their homepage kind of misleading us, trying to make us think that they're American-made dolls, unless we then click on the next page and read the entire rambly thing in detail to find out that they're not, but at least 
Faith Friends, on the other hand, has that in their mission. The dolls have to be made in America. There is no way that Faith Friends would do the exact same thing, right? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to read the founder Emily's full answer to this question. As the Made in the USA label has become increasingly rare, it has become even more important to me. I almost didn't pursue this path because currently the only vinyl doll manufacturers are all overseas. But then I realized that it doesn't seem to stop people from buying from the brand that uses our country's name on it. I think she's talking about American Girl, but okay. So why not create a better option, even if it's not perfect? The CEO of Public Square had told me that if my only option is to manufacture in China for now, to do it anyway, because the market needs a doll that will speak truth to girls and encourage them to be all God created them to be. So for now, that is what we are doing, while also supporting small American makers and brands to create special small batch runs of accessories like girl and doll birthday crowns, dresses, and more. It's all a bit of a test right now to find that sweet spot that combines what is ideal with what is possible and what the market can sustain. I'm hopeful that parents care enough about the shared values and supporting our small shop that we may be able to grow and move more production to our shores. Again? What are the chances that that would happen twice in a row? Is this a thing? At least American Girl Dolls have never once pretended to be manufactured in the USA. In fact, anything with a Made in West Germany for Pleasant Company tag is often emotionally valuable to collectors now. But what is it with this whole, yes, being made in America is part of our mission. We find that to be the most important thing. So are your dolls actually made in America? Of course they are, but actually, no, they're not. <laughs> now, I want to be clear that I'm not blaming any individual brand for not manufacturing their products in the U.S. That is legitimately extremely difficult to do. It's very expensive, you'll often be completely priced out of the market, and you won't have many options to choose from in terms of quality. So I'm not saying your products suck because they're not made in the U.S. Most things aren't, and we use most of those things every day. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism, all of that. But why mislead customers about it? Why even bring up being made in America as a selling point if it's not true? Just don't talk about it and the majority of customers aren't going to think that hard about it. I will say though, props to Faith Friends for using small American crafters to produce the accessory items for the dolls. I think that is genuinely great. But no props to them for this line. Even if my only option is to manufacture in China for now to do it anyway because the market needs a doll that will speak truths to girls and encourage them to be all God created them to be. Yeah, not only at this point was there another Christian American girl doll knockoff brand already on the market, but said knockoff was already also virtue signaling about how badly they wished they were manufactured in the USA as well. There is no such gap in the market. Stop pretending you're original. You're a knockoff of a knockoff. Gretchen. Stop trying to make fetch happen. The Faith Friends dolls retail for $115 a piece, the exact same price as American Girl dolls, but they don't include a book or a piece of quality historical fiction. I really wish I could see what's in the digital parent guide. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, I just figured out what girl journal means. It means that the journal is full size, like for the girl who's playing with the doll to write in. It's not a doll journal, like it's not scaled down to the size of the doll. Oh my god, that was gonna drive me crazy. All right, girl journal, we understand girl journal now. Cool, 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 cool. Now we have saved the absolute worst and craziest of these for last. Both of the brands I've discussed so far, Girls of Faith and Faith Friends, were created in the 21st century. So while they are shitty knockoffs, it's unlikely that anyone was actually misremembering these dolls as the actual American Girl dolls or confusing the brands for real. But there is one brand that multiple people did suggest to me in DMs, one brand that has been around since 1998, which could reasonably have been confused with the American Girl dolls, especially since the dolls' characters did rely on their pairing with historical fiction. The last brand we will be covering is Life of Faith also known as the Elsie Dinsmore Collection. Now, the Elsie Dinsmore book series itself first debuted back in 1867, around the time Kirsten and Addie, the American Girl Dolls, would have actually been living and doing their thing. So these books themselves were old, but the doll collection created to pair with these books did not debut until 1998, and then they went through revisions throughout the decade of the 2000s. And y'all, these books were wild. And the dolls, well, at least the dolls didn't seem to fully plagiarize American Girl dolls directly. They did have their own face molds. They had their own structures. And there's nothing sacred about the concept of pairing a doll with a book. Hell, I do that with Forever Home Friends, even though my dolls are dog plushies instead of humans. So I don't know if I would call this a knockoff, maybe in some places, but I will say that this is probably the brand that people were most likely to have mixed up with the American Girl dolls just because of the timing. Allie Beth Stuckey, who was born in the same year I was, would have been six when these dolls debuted. So when she tweets things like, remember when American Girl dolls taught traditional femininity? And most of us were like, no, 
it is possible that she or others could have been thinking of the Life of Faith dolls, which did just that. The Elsie Dinsmore book series, written by 19th century author Martha Finley, includes 28 books about a good Christian girl named Elsie always being good and Christian and perfect. Let's take a look at Book Riot's 2021 article reviewing the Elsie Dinsmore books. In the article, Who the Heck is Elsie Dinsmore and Why You Should Care About Who Reads Her Books, Courtney Rogers writes, Elsie was even parodied in a short story by O. Henry, Elsie in New York. Finley wrote the Elsie books as a guide for girls on how to be the ideal Christian daughter. This is not a critique of Christian literature, but rather of the disturbing content within the Elsie books, including abuse, racism, grooming, and ableism. Wow, you've got to love it when the entire first paragraph of a book review is basically one long ass trigger warning. I guess we're in for a ride with these books. As Book Riot continues... Elsie became hugely popular within evangelical and fundamental Christian circles, prompting a doll line, activity books, and Bible study curriculums. The Elsie books are still being handed to young girls as recreational literature. While Elsie is first introduced as a seven-year-old, she lives with her grandparents on a plantation in the antebellum South. Woo! We are off to a start here! So I guess these dolls were made in 1998. Five years after the success of American Girls, 1993 doll Addie, who also begins her story in the antebellum South, but from a little bit of a different perspective than Elsie's. Don't forget, Addie's also Christian. She loves church. It's part of her stories and her arc as a character, but I guess it's only Christian enough for these people if she's a white girl who doesn't do woke things like not support slavery. Anyway, as Book Riot continues, despite Elsie's Christian obsession, the books are staunchly anti-Catholic. It's important to note that Finley was the daughter of a strict Presbyterian minister. When Elsie is sent to a Catholic boarding school, it's for punishment. Elsie has nightmares of demonic looking nuns. Catholic traditions are described as inaccurately as possible to the point of calling Catholicism a superstition. Okay, so I get it. These dolls were released one year after American Girl's 1997 doll, Josefina, who is Catholic. But Catholics aren't real Christians, so these dolls had to be made to remind people who the real Christians are. Got it. So what conflicts does our hero Elsie face, other than having to fight off the Catholics? Let's find out. At the hands of her step-grandmother, Elsie is abused emotionally and physically. Elsie's father, Horace, runs from his travels and takes Elsie home with him. Horace is a confounding character, half villain, half hero. Horace is the absent father who returned for his darling daughter. He's wicked because he's not a real Christian like the rest of the family. Elsie worships him despite Horace's strict disciplinary style. Horace puts the little girl on a diet of bread and water as punishment. At one point, jealous Horace forbids Elsie from speaking with anyone, including writing and receiving letters. There is another factor to Elsie and Horace's relationship. They embrace, cuddle, and kiss full on the mouth like a romantic couple. Elsie is described with sensual language even from a young age. Horace's friend Edward is blatantly in love with the eight-year-old Elsie. He voices that he wishes she were 10 years older. Yes, Edward does eventually marry the adult Elsie. There it is, folks. That's traditional femininity. We need to preserve children's youth and innocence. Protect girlhood. The American Girl Dolls, whose mission is to do exactly that, are clearly failing at protecting girlhood because they're too woke, doing things like checks, notes, never letting any character have a single romantic relationship. That's not traditional girlhood. No, traditional innocent girlhood is about being groomed by your dad's friends starting when you're eight years old. Got it. So we've already got physical abuse, emotional abuse, grooming, adults being creepy to children, the explicit declaration of one true religion, what more could there possibly be? Did you forget we're in the antebellum South? As Book Riot's review says, it's clear from the first book that Elsie and her wealthy family live on plantations and own slaves. They own between 200 and 300 slaves, whom they refer to as servants. Elsie is close to her nanny, whom she calls Aunt Chloe, but doesn't offer Chloe any protection or payment because Chloe is happy as she is. Chloe is the very picture of a black mammy stereotype. Chloe claims that Jesus loves her just the same as if she were white. All of the black characters speak in broken pigeon English and are presented as slow, childlike and peaceful. They are happy to work on the plantation after the Civil War to take low wages. Only their dialogue was updated for republication. When Elsie and Edward are married, they have their own plantation. They justify owning slaves by being kind and proselytizing to them, hoping that Jesus will make them white in heaven. Yep, there it is. Hoping Jesus will make them white in heaven. What the actual hell? Jesus loves me. This I know. If you don't, I find a hole. So this idealized version of heaven that Elsie is striving for is still racist? Like, the, the view of the perfect heaven in her mind also has racism? What the ever-loving fuck is going on here? Okay, so these books are insane. We know that. They were first published in the 1860s. Now, what was the reason for launching a doll collection to pair with them in 1998? 
Well, let's take a look at the dolls. To learn about the history of these dolls, I checked out a blog called Little Raven Creations, which I'll link in the description below. As the Little Raven Creations blog explains, a Life of Faith dolls, originally the Elsie Dinsmore doll collection, debuted in 1998 when homeschooling parents Lee and Bill Bereza created the small business Breezy Point Treasures and based their custom doll on the heroine of the Elsie Dinsmore Christian book series by Martha Finley. Why am I not surprised that this started as a Christian homeschooling thing? Like, why? So it sounds like it was around 2003 that the brand first became known as A Life of Faith rather than the Elsie Dinsmore doll collection. The collection included many dolls beyond Elsie, including Elsie's cousin Mildred and Elsie's eventual daughter Violet. They also had one non-white doll, a woman named Laylee who uh, checks notes. Yep, she's enslaved. And they also released a Great Depression doll named Kathleen, who despite being released in 2003, definitely wasn't a knockoff of American Girl's Great Depression doll kit who came out in 2000, just three years earlier, right? Especially since all of the original Elsie Dinsmore books were published long before the Great Depression actually even happened in the real world. But the question remains, are these actually American Girl doll knockoffs? As the blog Little Raven Creations explains, a life of faith dolls have an undeniable high quality feel to them with well-structured, balanced, full vinyl bodies, beautifully detailed hands and feet, and cute tilting heads. They stand a smidgen over 18 inches tall, and unlike most full vinyl body dolls, they have similar proportions to American Girl dolls. The blog then shows pictures of the dolls sharing clothes with American Girl dolls, so I'm gonna say yes. Now, one difference these dolls have from American Girl dolls is that their hands are specifically sculpted so that you could bring them together in prayer. I'm not kidding. Honestly, if I'm looking at these dolls solely from a doll collector perspective, Life of Faith dolls are by far the best looking quality wise out of these knockoffs. Like sure, the Girls of Faith ones had cute faces, but they looked more like straight up American Girl ripoffs. Meanwhile, these Life of Faith dolls have significantly different facial designs. And I've got to say the artistry behind their eyes is absolutely beautiful. And their clothing appears to be historically accurate, detailed, and well-crafted. I can see why these dolls went over so well. But since the books that pair with these dolls are full of racist and abuse apologism and child grooming, I guess I'm currently experiencing whatever Emily felt when she saw the content of the body image book. She was angry at the book for accepting LGBTQ people and I'm angry at these books for promoting abuse. I guess we're definitely not the same. Anyway, I'm wondering what your guys' thoughts are on all of these different types of American Girl doll knockoffs. Do you think it's possible that some of these angry influencers may have been confusing the past of American Girl for something like Life of Faith and maybe they remember an Elsie Dinsmore doll they got in 1998 and, and thought that was Kirsten or something and said, I don't know. Let me know your guys' thoughts on all of that in the comments below. But either way, this was a really fun topic to look into just because I always enjoy researching dolls and this was just so weird that I, I couldn't ignore it. I'll be back in a couple weeks with another video for you guys. I will see you guys then. In the meantime, support small businesses, support American-made businesses, but not businesses that lie about being made in America. <laughs> Have a good start to your weekend. Bye. Get you some nuts. Yeah, you effin'. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who.